Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here. In this video, I'm going to show you a few tricks to help you paint checkers. I know this is probably not something everyone will want to attempt, but the good news is that the hacks and tips I'll show will likely be useful in some other way to most painters. Here's what I use to get these checkers done. On the technical side, I've got a spray can of Rust-Oleum Clear Gloss Enamel, the Aho Airbrush Flow Improver, a round wooden toothpick, and some Tamiya Hobby Masking Tape. You can use your preferred enamel varnish. I think gloss or satin finish will work best for this. As for the Flow Improver, it's to thin and slow the paint drying, so if you have an acrylic retarder medium or a glaze medium, then you can use those in place of the Flow Improver. For paints, I used Vallejo Deep Yellow and some Army Painter Soft Tone Wash and did most of my brush work with a Monument Hobbies Zero Kalinske Detail Brush. For model preparation, I'll spare you the video of the clear coat curing, so trust me when I say I already have two thin coats of Rust-Oleum Gloss Enamel and let the model cure for over 24 hours. That part is important later as I want a durable layer beneath the checkers. This also works great for smoothing out surfaces for easier decal application and of course protects the paint job from the hazards of gaming and transport. As you saw in the still photo, I also placed small sections of Tamiya masking tape to act as a guide to align all four sides and patterns relative to each other. It helped me to take into account that the left leg is elevated so the level reference for the checkers would be slightly canted. I've started out by thinning my yellow with some flow improver and loaded a full brush of water. I've mixed it thoroughly and I'm looking for a good compromise between coverage and drying time. The more additive, the longer the drying time. I'm starting with a small amount of paint on my brush and gently applying small amounts of paint in a bit of a stippling motion. Because I don't have a grid pattern on these areas, I'm using the black marks I made on my tape as a width guide and then trying to make a few even sized squares. I'm doing my best to get a sharp square shape, but I'm not trying to get it completely covered in one coat. Looking at my other patterns and using the reference lines, I'll start the second and match its size as closely to the first. Don't worry if it's not sharp yet, I'm going to show you how to get that taken care of. I'm letting it dry a bit, and remember this is a curved surface, so there's no real way to get a perfectly square pattern, and that's okay. I've left this video unedited as far as content is concerned. I have no jump cuts and no crossover edits. I'm going to make sure that the entire video plays so that you can watch the process from start to finish. It does take me about 15 minutes to do one, I guess you could call it a shin, side on, these, on this Timberwolf, but realistically, if I was Showing this from start to finish for all four sides, it would be about an hour's worth of time. It does make quite a difference though on the finished miniature, and I'll tell you that it was really fun to see this all painted up and how it looked when it was finished. Now for the big trick. Taking my toothpick, I'm going to gently scrape the outer edges until I get them nice and sharp. You don't need a lot of pressure and the gloss coat beneath allows for this to happen easily as it doesn't adhere strongly to the gloss paint and won't damage the paint beneath. Now I'll join the two squares, again trying to match the same size and shape of the first two. I'm rotating the miniature to give myself better angles, and remember the tip of the brush is your best edge in a corner. Brush strokes that pull towards your torso are typically the straightest and most controlled. I'm slowly building my pattern and working towards making them as similar as possible. One thing I didn't do that you've probably heard about to help plan out your checkers pattern is to use a mechanical pencil to sketch a grid. I could have done this here, but I would have done it beneath the gloss coat as it's very difficult to see the graphite on the glossy surface. I'm not sure how easy it would be to see a dark color like this brown, but if you're painting checkers over a lighter tone, it might be a really helpful tool. I'll continue painting, making my checkers as evenly sized height and width wise as possible. 
keeping in mind that this is really just a initial sketch and that I'll always be able to go back and touch it up with a toothpick once it's dried a little bit. The flow improver, in this case, will also help keep the paint a little bit softer than usual, at least for the short term. That also helps with removing it. If you find that you get a buildup of little pieces of paint as you've gone to scrape away with the toothpick, you can use your finger or a small soft brush to brush them away from the painted surfaces. Of course, the color for your checkers really doesn't matter. I just happen to be using yellow to match the artwork. Some colors are definitely easier to paint than others, especially depending on the color beneath. You might find that you need to do a brighter coat or a base coat of a different color, especially if you're painting lighter ones like this. Something like that would include maybe a, a light brown beneath a yellow if you have a darker color underneath like black or purple or something along that line. But you understand what I'm saying. Once you've got your basic pattern you can go in and really try to sharpen it up. I'm trying to fix this upper half before I take the tape off so that I've got a nice even reference and all the pattern is already distributed well so that I don't potentially go and start having a weird kind of round deviation or something like that. There may be a little paint that got under the edge of the tape and that's fine. Again, you can just use your toothpick to remove any excess. And I really wasn't trying to paint off of that edge line as well, like a masking if I was airbrushing. It was really just to make sure that the reference line on the bottom of those squares was as even as possible from each side. If you're doing other types of detail painting, perhaps freehand or knot work or emblems, anything at all really, this gloss coat trick will definitely help you. The only downside again is that you don't have a real easy way to sketch anything out on top of the gloss coat, so you'll have to plan ahead. You could also use a alcohol or other remover with a Q-tip if you decide you need to take all of that away. It's a great save point if you need to work on a project later and you need to get your miniatures painted up to a certain level and get them on the table, and then you can come back to them later and paint right over the top of that gloss. You can see once you get most of those first layer of squares filled in, the pattern really starts to present itself and it becomes much more intuitive on the placement of the last few areas. It definitely also takes some practice and I've got quite a bit when it comes to checkers, so don't get intimidated or frustrated if it doesn't work out as easily for you the first few times that you try it. You can always practice on an easy to use model or a flat surface like a plastic hex base or even you could just even paint on some, some paper. Once you get a feel for how the paint that you're applying works as far as drying time and fluidity, you'll really start to become familiar with detail painting. It is a bit different process than painting an entire miniature at once. Don't forget to rinse your brush in between a few, uh, a few applications of paint. You don't really want that paint to dry on your bristles. Even with the flow improver, it will eventually start to dry and cake and the bristles will become kind of stuck together and that really defeats the ability of your brush to help you detail paint. I will make note that I am touching my miniature with my bare hands and I should have been wearing gloves. Oils on your fingers can get onto your miniature and contaminate things and cause all kinds of problems later as far as adherence and things like that. So unfortunately I'm not being a good example of that. But keep that in mind, if you don't have to touch your miniature, it's for the best. The reason in this case is that I don't have my miniature stuck to a paint holder or a handle. I actually have just a pin through the foot because I was rebasing them. And this was kind of my only option, especially because I knew I was going to paint between the legs and I wanted to be able to access it from up underneath. Of course, I could reattach that plastic base using the foot pegs, but I'm repositioning, repositioning the entire thing. So it kind of just didn't work out that way. On the last few checkers, I'm just kind of lightly adjusting the intensity of the paint. It's going to be darker on the underside. 
You won't see me apply any soft tone wash during this video. I actually waited for the paint to completely dry before I applied it. But that's all I did was a semi coverage layer there. I did put it over the checkers on the arms evenly, but it was thinned down with some water. I weathered the, ch the lower legs pretty heavily with some dust and dirt effects, so I knew that they were already going to be darker and it would be masked. For those that are starting out trying this technique or working on checkers, don't try to paint super small checkers. That's the hardest part because trying to make them all look like squares can be really, really difficult even for someone with a lot of experience. It's not impossible, but that's kind of like shooting for expert level the very first time you attempt something. I chose a nice, I think, compromise on the size of the checkers. You want to get at least three or four rows, I think, to get the overall effect and show off the really cool checker appearance. And with that, I'll let the rest of the video play as you watch me touch up the layers. If you wanted to, you could also highlight these layers. You could add some white, or if you're using a different color, you could start to make some transitions, making the upper sides lighter and the lower sides darker, any number of things. The same technique would still apply. If you make a mistake, you have the toothpick option to get out of it. If you find that you're, it's getting away from you and you need to go back and reset to the base coat, reapply your base color and then go back to your fades.
Here's a picture of the finished work. I know it's obviously been weathered and shows the entire model matte coated and completed, but you can see that once you've got those checkers on and you've done your last little bit of work, you really, really end up with a nice result. I wish you the best in trying this out. Practice, take your time. If it doesn't work out the first time, keep trying. And with that, I'll hand it over to Tex. We certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below. Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Check out our website at camospecs.com. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.